the key. It was 9.58 Tuesday morning. My mind was racing and my heart was pounding out of my chest. Not to mention my palms were all gross and sweaty. I did a small eye roll and then reluct reluctantly grabbed my binder and took the walk of shame out the art room door. I had just been called to the vice principal's office, but I had no idea why. I knew that in just minutes the whole school would know that I was sent to the office. I tried to walk quickly to the office to beat the bell that let everyone out of class. While walking, almost jogging, I briefly started to think about any trouble I may, I may have gotten into. Nothing came to mind. My stomach was in complete knots, and not the loose shoestring knots either. These were the type of knots that Boy Scouts tie that are impossible to get out. I thought, the thought of sitting in Mr. Heckel's office and begging not to receive a detention made me sick. My walk to the office only took two minutes, but felt much longer. Next thing you know, I'm walking in through his office door. He greeted me with a friendly, oh, there you are, please take a seat. His tone was nothing like I expected it to be. I expected it to be harsh and demanding. It was surprisingly friendly and that made me even more nervous. I took the seat farthest away from him. By this time I was jittery and on edge. Do you know why you're here, he snapped. This time his tone was a bit more like what I imagined it would sound like. I, repli I replied with my sweetest sounding voice. No, I don't think I've done anything wrong. My voice was way too shaky, so the attempt at sounding sweet completely failed. I've never had my luck trying to fake those sweet voices. Regardless of what I sounded like, the pressure of not knowing what I had done was eating me alive. He was writing on this big index card after my reply. When he was done writing, he, he'd look up at me and say, and told me I was there because I had skipped class during the study hall the previous week. In a snap, everything immediately came back to me. I remembered Tuesday the last week when hanging out in the bathroom with Emma during study hall. We were fixing our hair when Holly walked in and asked us if we were skipping. So we started laughing and decided to joke around with her that we were skipping. Well, we were completely kidding. We had permission from our study hall teacher to be there, Ms. Smith. I started wondering why Holly had took this so seriously. We weren't skipping, I stated. I began explaining what really happened. We had permission to be in there doing our hair. And we were just being sarcastic when we told her, Holly that we were skipping. Now I was, I was now relieved by the fact that I knew what was going on. The only thing left to do was explain to him that we didn't do anything wrong. Mr. Heckel gave a lot of uh-huh, mm, and I sees. This put me on edge again because it seemed like he wasn't going to believe me. But after a while, he replied, well, your story makes sense, but you're sure that this is the truth? Absolutely, I say a bit too quickly and confidently. Okay, I talked to your friend earlier, he said. I hadn't thought of what she might have said. She said that you were the one that came up with the idea for skipping. It was now obvious that she had cracked under the pressure and told Mr. Heckel some lie to make me look bad to avoid getting herself in trouble. I couldn't believe this. This had to be one of the worst days ever. It was now 12.20 and I, I had been in there for almost two hours. Mr. Heckel told me to go out to eat lunch but report back. As quickly as I could, I left his office. During lunch, I ate in complete silence right next to Emma. Barely one word was said at the table. I definitely didn't want to bring up the fact that I knew she was a liar at the moment. Everyone else at my lunch ta table seemed to just go along with it and not say anything either. But I don't think they knew I'd been in the office for the past two hours. I wish they would have said something, anything. I wanted to just hear something to make me forget about Emma's lie or take my mind off what, was, what I was going to tell Mr. Heckel. I knew that I couldn't be the, the one to get in trouble because she lied. Emma needs to learn that she can't get away with everything. I had a plan. And whether it was or wasn't going to work, I was going to try my best, since I already told him the truth. 
I was going to stick with it and do everything to explain to Mr. Heckel how Emma was lying. Lunch went by slower than usual, but after a while the bell did ring and I was right back in Mr. Heckel's office. Once I entered his office, I took my seat right where I was sitting before. I left for lunch. I took a deep breath and, ins and instantly Mr. Heckel said, Look, you haven't been in much trouble before, and I know that you've never lied to me before. Because of that, I'm letting you go today. You seem honest. Still exhaling, I got a rush of relief. It was now 12.59. He sent me back to class with the pass. I couldn't be any happier to go to class. That day taught me that honesty pays off. If you're honest, you will be in less trouble or no trouble at all. It may not always be the easiest thing to do, but it's the right thing to do. My advice to anyone that is or has ever been in trouble is stick to the truth, even if you were the one that did the crime. If you lie, your punishment will be a lot worse. Don't do the crime if you can't pay the time. Lying constantly won't get you anywhere, and chances are that if you lie a lot, when you tell the truth, nobody will believe you. Honesty is the key to life. If you're honest, good things will come from it. You should never regret telling the truth, whether it's, whether it's telling someone you're not okay or telling a principal the truth. If you're honest, you will get in less trouble, and most of the time it can help you. Take it from someone who learned this just in time. Honesty is the key.